So, welcome back students. So, we are going through the module 3. So, in the previous lecture, we discussed the uh, pollution abatement in phosphorus industries and previous, prior to that, we also see the phosphoric acid manufacture of phosphoric acid using various methods. So, today we will move to the chloralkali process that is the production of chlorine. So, today's lecture we will primarily focus on the chlorine production and then we later on see what are the various methods for production of chlorine and the advantages and disadvantages associated with it. So, what are the contents? We will do introduce the chlorine, the relevance of chlorine gas, where it is used its physical properties. Then we move on to its physical and chemical properties. I was just now saying that we will see what are its properties and different uh, uh, forms where they are found. And finally, we will go with the chloroalkali process. The chloroalkali process, we will discuss the three methods, the mercury cell process, the diaphragm method and then the membrane cell process. So, as you know chlorine, you must be aware, chlorine is the most abundant element in the atmosphere. It is mainly found in volcanic gases, but other than volcanic gases, they are also found in sort of ionic chlorides like potassium chloride, okay, sodium chloride. So, you have the chlorine attached to these salts in primarily in the salt form you are getting. So, in seawater, chlorine is found in the forms of chlorides containing 2.9 weight percent of sodium chloride and 0.9 weight percent of magnesium chloride. So, these many amount of chlorine is formed in sea water and that is actually what we call as the brine solution. So, chlorine as you know it is a very highly oxidizing agent. So, chlorine is used for bleaching textiles. So, initially they were uh, manufactured from manganese dioxide and hydrochloric acid. So, what it is it they reacted the manganese dioxide and hydrochloric acid to form chlorine. This was a method which was divided long back by Weldon the company's name. Then in 1866, chlorine was also produced. They somehow managed a different route. So, chlorine was produced by oxidation of hydrogen chloride gas by or we can say it is a wet air oxidation of hydrogen chloride gas in the presence of copper salt. But now, these methods have been improved and the modern techniques have been adopted. Now, more than 95 percent of the world chlorine production is obtained by the chloralkali process. So, what are that chloroalkali process? We will discuss. Prior to that, let us see what are the physical and chemical properties of chlorine. They are listed the atomic number, the atomic mass, melting point is, is less than 0, boiling point. Then, so obviously, at the room temperature, it will exist as a gas. So, you can pressurize it and make it as a liquid. So, the density of gas at 0 degree Celsius and 1 atmosphere pressure is this much and the density relative to air density is this much 2.48 kg per meter cube. Enthalpy of fusion and enthalpy of uh, vaporization data is also there. These are some important properties of chlorine gas. Now, chlorine is known to be highly soluble in sulfur chlorine compounds. So, sulfur chloride compounds they are very useful in many industries. So, these are called as chlorination solvents. It means in those solvents which has comprising of sulfur chlorine compounds, if chlorine is soluble in that they are called as chlorination solvents. So, these are chlorination solvents. Certain metallic chlorides and oxide chlorides including vanadium oxide chloride, chromyl chloride, titanium tetrachloride and tin chloride are effective chlorine solvents. So, these are the chlorine solvents. So, the solubility of this chlorine gas in various solvents are given here. So, these are all given at this temperature which is below ambient. So, sulfuryl chloride, disulfur dichloride, phosphoryl chloride, silicon tetrachloride, then titanium tetrachloride, benzene, chloroform, dimethyl formamide and acetic acid. So, if you see the solubility is given here, the wet person and the last two are in grams. So, you see the solubility, wet person is pretty highly soluble in disulfur dichloride and uh, least soluble in sulfuryl chloride and they are primarily very much soluble in dimethyl formamide or acetic acid. So, where can chlorine be found? Chlorine be found in large quantity especially in rock salts and what are these rock salts? You may be aware this is sodium chloride, this is our table salt you know, then potassium chloride, so magnesium chloride. So, these are given names like biscophyte is magnesium chloride with 6 moles of hydrated water, then carnalite is KCl MgCl2 with 6 moles of hydrogen that is water. Then tetrahydrite is calcium chloride and magnesium chloride together with 12 moles of hydrated molecule of water 
then kyanite is potassium chloride with magnesium sulphate. So, these are the various forms of rock salts where chlorine lies. Okay. So, any of this can be used for the recovery of chlorine, but out of these the first two are important on which the electrolysis processes depend. So, over the next years it has been said that the global chlorine capacity is increasing modestly from 87.69 million tons per annum in 2019 to around projected 92.13 million tons per annum in 2024. So, chlorine gases as you know it can be used in the plasticizer industry, in the polymer industry and also as a bleaching agent. So, this chlorine has a good property, it can be used as a bleaching agent. So, for you know there is for cleaning of water etcetera, it can be used and it is still being used as a bleaching agent. So, chlorine is also present in plants and animals in the form of chlorides or free hydrochloric acid. Okay. So, these are the various sources of chlorine you have in the source such as rock salts then especially the magnesium, calcium, uh, potassium, sodium, these chlorides or it may also be present in plants and animals in the form of chlorides or free hydrochloric acid. So, chlorine production, what is the basis for chlorine production? So, it is a gas. So, from hydrogen chloride, chlorine can be produced. In So, this is the root they found out from HCl. So, but how to take out this HCl? So, beginning of the 19th century manganese oxide was used to oxidize hydrogen. So, what they did? They used hydrogen chloride as a source raw material and with it they actually oxidized this HCl with manganese oxide. But the yield was very low, it is only 30 percent of the theoretical achievable value. So, hydrogen chloride, 2 moles of hydrogen chloride reacts with 1 mole of manganese oxide to form manganese oxide and water and chlorine gas. Okay. So, chlorine gas is evolved here. Only the issue is with the rate determining step slow process, so the yield is low. So, then Decon is a company which then created a catalytic method based on wet air oxidation where around 70 percent yield could be obtained. So, here hydrogen chloride gas is directly oxidized to form water and chlorine. So, heat of reaction for this reaction is minus 114.6 kilojoules per mole. In chloroalkali process, so now most of them has been replaced because we need more and more amount of chlorine gas th than the theoretical. So, there was some improvement in the process. So, based on that all these processes are combinedly called as chloroalkali. Why chlor and why alkali? Because the product coming out is chlorine gas that is the primary product another is the alkali. The alkali means sodium hydroxide NaOH that is also formed along with chlorine gas. That is why the name originates from that fact and it is called chloroalkali. In chloroalkali electrolysis and what we do, where do we get chlorine? Source is now sodium chloride. So, aqueous solution of sodium chloride is electrolytically decomposed. It is decomposed by direct current to produce chlorine, hydrogen and sodium hydroxide solution. That is why the name chloroalkali comes. The overall reaction is this. So, it is the sum total of two half reactions because it is uh, electrolytic cell, you have an anode, you have a cathode, you have two half reactions and when these two half reaction gets combined, you get an overall reaction which is given here. So, sodium chloride reacts with water to form chlorine gas, hydrogen gas and a pure sodium hydroxide or a caustic solution. So, when the source is KCl, when if the source is KCl, then your product will be KOH. Okay. So, that is what I have written. Potassium hydroxide is one of the byproducts produced when potassium chloride is used as a raw material. So, you can either use sodium chloride or potassium chloride, but it is a aqueous solution of both of these. So, based on this, there are three processes there is the mercury cell process, the diaphragm cell process, and the membrane cell process. So, in these processes, the chloroalkali processes, there is something common. So, you have an aqueous solution of NaCl, which is also called as brine. So, when uh, I say in the methodology raw brine means when you are making some brine and recycled brine means the brine which is coming from the electrolytic cell, the recycled brine will have some amount of impurities. So, we will see that this impurity needs to be removed before it goes into the electrolytic cell and at the anode which is given a positive sign, anode is a positive sign, this is formed. 
okay so oxidation occurs so chlorine ions combines to form chlorine gas and two electrons and these two electrons are then given to the other part that is the cathode where hydrogen is liberated and OH ions ions are also formed. So here you see reduction, so why reduction because you see uh, you have hydrogen this oxygen uh, goes to the uh, so H2O gets reduced to OH ion, so here reduction occurs along with the production of hydrogen. So in one anode you have which is positive in sign there you liberate chlorine the oxidation occurs and in the cathode reduction occurs hydrogen is evolved. A suitable cathode materials should be selected, so now issue is you should have a suitable uh, cathode material so that it will be allows the production of hydrogen. So what is that platinum is the most commonly used cathode material, okay. platinum is the cathode material. So the issue is selectivity is never 100 percent, no you do not get um, as for example if you add these two electrodes and conduct electrolysis using direct current, do you get 100 percent selectivity? No, you would not get because there is some driving force for the OH ion ions which are evolved in the cathode to move towards anode. So if they move towards anode, they again will get oxidized, so when they get oxidized so they will consume some power, so what happens is if they are consuming some power it means the production of chlorine is less, so it means as they reach the anode when, when what reaches anode OH minus ion, they should not but they reach the anode they are oxidized so they will consume a power and then contaminate the chlorine produced by oxygen. So if we OH minus is reduced it will reduce to oxygen, in addition other undesired reactions can also be possible you do not because you do not have any hold on the reactions, so you can have hypochlorite or chlorate they can also be formed. So it is crucial to keep the reaction product, so it means let us say if you have an anode here, let us say if you have a cell like this, so let us say this is the anode and this is the cathode, so it means that uh, OH minus here it is liberated here, so this OH minus can go here, so here you have the chlorine gas liberated and here you have the hydrogen gas liberated and then in turn you are also getting NaOH. The only issue is because this OH minus can go here, so it will obviously chip in with some of the power and it will reduce the chlorine formation, so you need to have a separation between these two, so this is exactly the separation means the products, so only now if you produce a separation or some separating unit, so you allow in such a manner you allow Na plus to pass through, OH minus not to pass through to the anode side, okay. So this type of system that you have the separation between the reactant products evolved in another cathode are of two types, these are called the diaphragm cell. and then you have the membrane cell. So as the name suggests diaphragm and membrane means in the first case you have a diaphragm where it is made of asbestos and the, in the second case in the membrane cell you have a membrane which is made of some sulphur and fluorine atoms, so we will see that in detail, okay. So let us see the mercury cell process first. The mercury cell technique is the oldest industrial method for producing chlorine okay, by the electrolysis of sodium hydroxide. So liquid mercury here acts as a cathode, so it is obviously if liquid mercury here is acts as a cathode, so hydrogen should evolve from that, but usually the hydrogen is never, never evolved. There are some issues, maybe it is, I mean I leave it to you, it is primarily due to the rate determining step, because the rate determining step the hydrogen production is very, very low, so hydrogen is not liberated. Instead. There are some of the reactions which are included are something like this, so the sodium ion when gets reduced to form a amalgam sodium hydroxide, sorry not hydroxide this is sodium mercury amalgam, okay. So sodium that way it is taken up, now where is this electron formed, so this electron forms what happens is this NaG, this NaG 
the amalgam formed is regenerated by reaction with water. So, when you again add water to it, this is NaG and NaOH. So, it means you have an anode here, you have an anode where chlorine is liberated, you have a cathode again same thing, oh, you have a cathode, let us say the cathode here is liquid. Ag, where amalgam forms, but when you decompose the amalgam, you will get the mercury and the sodium hydroxide. So, this sodium hydroxide produced is very pure, so it is not at all contaminated. So, that is a very important source of sodium hydroxide. The process can also be used for the production of caustic solution. So, we will see the what is that flow sheet. So, this is it. So, you have this saturated brine, saturated brine means the amount of salt water can take and then sent. So, NaCl plus water is sent here. So, here you have the oxidation occurring, this is the anode part given a positive sign, chlorine gas is evolved fine. Then here what you, you have the mercury stream coming inside here and a sodium from the sodium chloride solution forms this reaction, sodium plus with mercury it forms is reduced to sodium mercury amalgam. So, the diluted brine is taken up from here because chlorine and sodium both are consumed and then the sodium amalgam here is sent here. Now, when it sends here, so hydrogen H2O that is water is sent and this reaction occurs along with generation of hydrogen gas. So, what happens is you have the concentrated NOH coming from the top because of this reaction, hydrogen liberated at the top and water coming in from the between. So, it means what you have is here the Ag is separated from the amalgam. So, this amalgam then comes out here. So, this amalgam the problem is this NaAg when it is this will be pure Ag here coming. This NaAg issue is you the concentration of Na is a problem. The, if the concentration of Na is higher, your viscosity issues is there. So, viscosity issue, viscosity, sorry the spelling is wrong, just correct it, viscosity. So, there are viscosity issues means this NaAg becomes highly viscous. So, it is very difficult to send it. So, there is a limit on the amount of sodium amalgam can form which makes a problem that the recycling becomes tougher. So, uh, when the recycling becomes tougher means you have more problem in the again putting the mercury back into the cathode part. So, that is why this method has limited application but a good advantage of this method is you get NaOH pure solution. This NaOH is highly pure. So, it is a good production of alkali such as NOH. So, this is the method. So, the amount of power consumed is the highest among all three methods. Okay. So, another thing why this has been disbanded is first is there is a mercury which is poisonous in nature and another is you have the viscosity issues while it is sent to the another decomposer the recovery unit. So, these two units have just made it not viable and they are replaced by the diaphragm and the membrane cells. So, if you see here the products, if you see saturated brine entering and diluted brine exiting. So, they are allowed to mix with each other, the products can come in contact with each other. Okay. There is no partition between the anode and cathode. Now, what in industry they, the this looks very simple for the industry, they will use a flow sheet something like this for mercury cell. So, the what it happens is, this is a fresh salt which is coming inside then you have the saturation unit. So, it is the brine saturation unit. So, if you see the yellow lines, these are the diluted brine coming from the electrolytic cell, fine. So, if I focus first on the electrolytic cell, this electrolytic cell, so you have the chlorine gas coming out. So, it this chlorine gas may contain some impurities. So, it is pressurized and then again crystallized and extracted and to get pure chlorine. Huh? So, finally, there are some other steps also which I have not written. Some steps are required it to crystallize to remove all the impurities. But any nevertheless this uh, electrolysis, so what you have a amalgam process, the amalgam this is a decomposition process where you send water, hydrogen is liberated and then you have a cooling 
then mercury is liberated. So, first hydrogen is liberated here, even when you cool down mercury is removed as well as hydrogen is also removed, this is amalgam. Then what is the remaining? You see that reaction, it is, so the NaG will form sodium hydroxide and Hg. So, Hg we have taken care, mercury is removed, then the NOH part, the caustic solution is again cooled, there will be some impurities of mercury inside, there is a mercury removal unit and it is, then it has been stored and sent for further processing the sodium hydroxide. Now, what is the remaining one? The mercury when it is decomposed then set back to the electrolysis. So, this is the recycle feed for mercury. So, there is the reaction, the two half reactions are carried out here in the anode and cathode part. So, analyte means the weak brine solution. So, this HCl acid is sent here so as to maintain the pH, the pH of the, con so if it should not be more alkaline. So, to maintain that alkalinity, some pH adjustment is required. So, if you see the brine, it is taking up the diluted brine. So, this diluted brine is the analyte. Again, there is some test or the checked for the pH. Then all the chlorine, there may be some chlorine gas present in the diluted brine. So, this chlorine gas is removed in the dechlorination unit. Then again, caustic solution is added here and finally, to uh, you know to if some more chlorine gas is there some chlorine chlorine gas may be there so as to neutralize those and send it as a diluted brine so if the diluted brine is there you add fresh salt then you get the saturated brine which is ready for the insertion to electrolytic cell but prior to that it goes to three steps precipitation filtration heat exchange so this is a raw brine so sometimes the impurities might be there from the fresh salt maybe magnesium or calcium okay magnesium calcium may be there. So, what they do? They send some precipitate and they take out this as a filter. In the filtration unit, they separate out this residue of magnesium and calcium. Then they get a purified brine. When the purifier again, they do some heat exchange, then adjust for the pH and send it to the electrolytic cell. And likewise, the entire cycle goes on. Okay, This is the entire process for the manufacture of the chlorine gas. So, we have only focused on in the previous slide, we have only focused on this part and this part. In the previous slide, the amalgam decomposition, the electrolytic unit, other, th other operations are also there in a, this setup. So, moving ahead, let us see the next method which is the diaphragm cell. The diaphragm cell method as I told you, there is a partition between anode and cathode. So, the it separates the anode and cathode in diaphragm cell. So, what they do? They give a microphorous diaphragm. So, this is made of asbestos. So, this asbestos, what they will do is that they will only allow the sodium Na plus to pass through this. So, the way it has been constructed in such a manner such that even it OH can pass, OH can also pass through this. But the amount of OH diffusing from the cathode to anode side is very, very less as compared to anode to cathode that is the diffusion of sodium ions. So, this is one barrier. So, they do not allow the chlorine and hydrogen to mix each other. So, again as you saw, see there is a two, this is a, this is your cathode where reduction occurs and this is the anode where oxidation occurs. You have the chlorine gas here with hydrogen gas here. So, even though some OH may be again liberated, they may again get oxidized to hydrogen gas. Then what you have is, we have a dil feed, diluted feed of NaOH and NaCl. This NaOH is highly pure, but not that pure as obtained in mercury cell, but it will have some impurities of 1 to 2 percent sodium chloride. So, this impurities are needs to be removed. Okay. It may be removed by crystallization, then adsorption, something, some methods are used to remove this sodium chloride. So, this is saturated brine entering and diluted NOH entering. So, as I told you, this microphotos diagram is only allowing Na plus to pass through from the anode to cathode side. Okay. It is very clear. So, the overall reaction is this. So, NaCl plus water gives chlorine, hydrogen and sodium hydroxide. So, this is NaCl is a byproduct in this case. So, again let us see what is the process diagram. See the process diagram, similar lines. Again you have the brine saturation unit, you add the salt here, you add water here, 
do a precipitation because to remove of calcium and magnesium remove them by filtration this becomes the residue then you send it exchange heat with the chlorine gas which is passing through then you send it to a brine saturation unit finally again exchange heat with the hydrogen which is evaporated and then send it to electrolysis. So, this electrolytic cell these two half reactions occur and finally what you get is you concentrate this is the liquid part. So, the liquid part is sodium hydroxide. So, what you do you concentrate it you cool it and basically you remove here you remove here NaCl here because I told you 1 to 2 percent. So, the NaCl is removed out here. So, you concentrate it, cool it, storage it and finally, what you get is pure NaOH here. Okay. Now, what happens is the remaining salt, uh, remaining salt as I told you. So, they will again be um, sent back this, this along with those uh, one is which the NaOH another is this NaCl solution the depleted brine is again sent back from uh, here and here to make up and send it back to the recycled brine into the brine saturation unit. So, the electrolytic cell as you know you evolve hydrogen at the cathode and chlorine at the anode. So, this chlorine after exchanging heat it is dried then compressed then liquefied and evaporated to remove the impurities present in the chlorine gas. So, that you get pure chlorine gas. Okay, so, these three processes are essential part in fact, the four process they are essential parts before the chlorine is sent to the industry. This makes the chlorine 100 percent pure you remove the other gases let us say hypochlorite or some chlorate is formed or oxygen is formed you remove them by drying compression liquefaction or evaporation then you get pure chlorine. The remaining hydrogen is sent to the heat exchanger and then again some oxygen if produced they are removed and you get pure hydrogen. So, this is the way it has been done. Okay. The precipitants is same use for actually precipitate out the calcium and magnesium impurities. So, this is the way the entire flow diagram of a diaphragm process actually works. So, again what we saw in our process is only this ah, just now what we did is the cell is only this part. So, if you see what we read in our books are only confined to the electrolytic cell the remaining operations we are not aware. So, this actually completes the entire operation for a diaphragm cell. Now, comes the most important or the most recent method where most of the chlorine is actually formed or produced. So, now cation permeable ion exchange membrane. Now, you saw that the diaphragm that is some partition if we can make a membrane which will only allow the cation to pass through. What is the cation here? Cation here is sodium. So, it will allow only the sodium to pass through, but it will not allow the OH minus. In the diaphragm there is some OH passing, but here it is absolutely not at all possible the OH1 to go from the cathode to anode. So, there are development of efficient cationic membranes which has led to the breakthrough in sodium chloride electrolysis. It the, there is a requirement of membrane. So, what, what is it? What type of membranes? The cation exchange membranes is fine, we require. But what does that membrane material needs to do or needs to have? It should resist the harsh conditions. One is the chlorine containing analyte, which is coming from the anode, and the highly caustic alkaline media, which is coming from the other side. So, this SO3F that is sulfate fluorosulfate group based of gauged membranes have been recently used and these are actually the membrane material which will only allow the sodium ions to pass through. Unavoidably still a little amount of OH ion will flow from the cathode to anode compartment causing a reaction in the still I mean even though I tell it is 100 percent not possible for OH little amount of OH ion still pass through this cation exchange membrane. So, maybe what you can lower this is through contribution of the side reaction. So, that is what we call a side reaction when OH get oxidized to oxygen. So, it can be minimized by modifying the anode surface or lowering of the p. So, that is why I told you when you add HCl you lower the pH. Okay. So, it means either you modify the anode surface or lower the pH that can actually minimize the byproduct or the side reactions. So, during the diffusive transfer of cations now the issue is with the cations when you have sodium ions passing through this membrane some water is also transferred H2O. 
So it means when this water is also transferred to the cathode side, the resulting sodium hydroxide is diluted. So it means the sodium hydroxide solution obtained here is the most diluted among the three process. So that means that uh, resultant chlorine we have to make or design the cell in such a manner that the resultant chlorine and hydrogen produced can be separated in the compartments or outside the cell easily. Okay. So now there are two issues which you have to keep in mind the life of the membrane. The life of the membrane will depend on the purity of the brine because if it is highly salt concentrated is very large then it may damage the membrane. Okay. If it damages the membrane, so it means it depends upon the concentration of the brine. So after purification, precipitation and filtration, the brine is also purified with a ion exchanger. Now issue is ion means some other ions may be coming, so you have to remove those. So you have to only pass pure brine solution into the electrolytic cell, that you have to take care. So in this membrane cell process, that is very important. So this is the membrane cell process, you have the anode here. This is the cathode here, we have the half reaction chlorine, oxidation occurring, reduction occurring or other than reduction this reaction also occur that is sodium plus ions transfers from the anode to cathode and forms NOH. So you have the concentrated NOH here but you have a depleted brine on the other side. So because this is depleted brine because this NOH is not able to go here. Okay. So, it means that uh, when Na plus is going, so it means you will have more and more of Cl ion minus, minus ion. So, that is why we call it depleted brine. So, you will have primarily more of Cl minus ion here where Na plus is more here. Now, as I told you this OH minus is already present here. So, this NaO plus and OH minus reacts and forms sodium hydroxide. But since I told you water may also pass through, so this water then is comes through here. So, instead of this breaking concentrated, it becomes dilute. That is the point it has to be noted. So, hydrogen gases is liberated. So, this is called the selective cation exchange membrane. So, what is the overall reaction? Same overall reaction, the sodium chloride reacts with water to form chlorine, hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide solution. So, this is the way a membrane cell actually conducts or it conducts the electrolysis. So, this is the flow diagram for membrane cell process. So, you have the brine preparation. So, you prepare the brine by adding the, the salt and water. Brine is prepared. The caustic solution is coming here in a which. So, this is the electrolysis. The electrolysis will have depleted brine and then hydrogen is liberated from the cathode side. So, you cool it down and get hydrogen while you get chlorine gas on the anode side where these steps needs to be done cooling, drying, compression, liquefaction, evaporation. These are the same 5 steps which you also obtain in the diaphragm process to get chlorine gas. The caustic solution is then sent to a concentration, concentrated cooling storage where the water is removed and you get concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. So this NOH, then the depleted brine once comes here it comes here, it is again dechlorinated because it may be contaminated with chlorine. So, because you in the previous slide, if you remember, the chlorine gas is formed in the anode side. With the anode side, there is more of chlorine atoms. So, because of this chlorine atoms, it may be contaminated, the depleted brine may be contaminated with chlorine. So, this contamination with chlorine, so you remove this chlorine and then add so the caustic solution, then you recover or come back to the original brine preparation. Now why is this HCl used? Again it is to, as I told you, is to avoid the side reaction and also adjust the pH. That is why this HCl is added. So this is the way the in the membrane cell process, the chlorine is formed. So if you remember in the mercury cell, diaphragm cell and membrane cell, the purest NOH, the alkali form is in mercury cell. Okay. So, but the selective process, the most selective process where you get pure chlorine is the membrane cell process. Okay. But all these methods are together called as chloralkali and this chloralkali is basically the workhorse of nowadays for the production of chlorine gas. So, I will conclude this lecture and uh, please go to these two references, not much the, our textbook as usual 
and the second part is the Smitiger, which is the editor of this book, Chlorine Principles in Industrial Practice. This is you will get the entire detailed process diagram for membrane cell, mercury cell, or the diaphragm cell. Thank you. Thank you.